Hey, what's up guys? As Bitcoin bull market continues, in this video I will explain how three different model predicts Bitcoin at $300,000. Then Michael Saylor will explain how BTC will reach $5 million over time and capture 20% of entire global assets. Listen up, you already invest in crypto. Why aren't you investing in tax-free crypto? I trust Capital is the only provider that allows you to invest in crypto assets within your retirement account. They allow you to not only buy Bitcoin, but Ethereum, Ripple and many others. They even have Chainlink coming very soon. It's designed for beginners and experts alike. They give you 24-7 trading access and even have built-in institutional grade secure storage. You do not need to worry about creating private keys. If you open an iTrust Capital Roth IRA, it allows you to buy Bitcoin now and when asset grows over the next few years, you keep all the profit for yourself, no taxes. If you want to learn more, head to itrustcapital.com and request a free insider guide now. This will teach you all about crypto retirement accounts and how you can invest tax-free. Link to iTrust Capital is in the description box below. Let's start with the Bitcoin price action. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is trading around $48,000 a coin. Yesterday, it actually reached an all-time high. It charged $49,700, very close to $50,000. Also, current Bitcoin market cap is at around $890 billion and for Bitcoin to reach $1 trillion milestone, we need BTC to increase by 11%. Which means Bitcoin will reach $1 trillion market cap when single BTC will be at $53,000 per coin. Very exciting time to be in crypto, especially in Bitcoin. Despite the relatively high Bitcoin price, a little guy keeps stacking sets. The number of wallets that holds at least 0.01 BTC continues to increase. It's not an all-time high, not yet, but it's getting there. There are more than 8.6 million Bitcoin wallets with at least 0.01 BTC. 0.01 BTC at the current price, that would be around $480. But keep this in mind, this is at least 0.01 BTC. Also, we can see this change in the other chart. 0.01 BTC wallets or shrimps, as I like to call it, is up by 1.4% month over month. Also, we can see a huge increase in the number of wallets with at least 1000 BTC addresses. Those whales are up by more than 5% month over month. It tells us that shrimps and whales accumulating Bitcoin. This chart represents the Bitcoin supply transitioning from the long-term to short-term Bitcoin holders. The blue line represents the total supply held by the long-term holders, and the purple line represents the total supply held by short-term holders. In the middle of the bull market in July 2017, we saw that transition. The supply of Bitcoin held by the short-term holders rapidly spiked, while the supply of Bitcoin held by the long-term holders rapidly dropped. And on that transition, Bitcoin is trading at around $3,000 per coin. Correlated to the supply transition, Bitcoin increased and topped at $20,000 later that year. And that would be 6.6x ROI from the supply transition till the top. Since then, we haven't seen the same Bitcoin supply transition until now. Just recently, we saw the same Bitcoin supply transition, where the long-term holders selling the coins to the short-term holders. Historically, this is the strong indicator that bull market will continue to run. Current Bitcoin price is at $48,000 per coin. If BTC can generate another 6.6x from here, just like back in 2017, then Bitcoin price would surpass $310,000 per coin. This is precisely the top of the what stock to flow model predicts. I am not too sure how long term and short term holders define in this chart, but I am a long term holder and I am definitely not planning to sell any of my Bitcoin. I think I will never sell them. If I need a bunch of cash to buy a house or Tesla for example, I can borrow against it. Here is another very cool chart that represents a strong continuation of the bull market. On the X axis we have number of days after the Bitcoin having and on the Y axis we have Bitcoin price respectively. The purple line represents Bitcoin performance after the first Bitcoin halving. The green line represents Bitcoin performance after the second Bitcoin halving. And the blue line represents the current Bitcoin performance after the most recent Bitcoin halving. But you may ask, what the hell is this yellow line? Well, good question. This yellow line represents an average performance between the first and second Bitcoin halving, which is quite useful. In the first Bitcoin halving that took place in 2012, Bitcoin increased from $11 till $1,100 within 370 days. 
and that would be 100x ROI. In the second Bitcoin halving that took place in 2016, Bitcoin increased till $20,000 within 530 days or so, and that would be 33x. In 2020, Bitcoin halving BTC was trending at around $8,500. If BTC follows the first Bitcoin halving performance, then BTC would increase till $800,000 per coin. If BTC follows the second Bitcoin halving performance, then BTC would increase till $280,000. If Bitcoin follows an average performance between first and second Bitcoin halving, Bitcoin should top slightly over $300,000. And the reason why it's not higher is because Bitcoin topped after the first Bitcoin halving and the top after second Bitcoin halving happened in different times. And therefore an average performance is also less volatile. Another very cool part about this is when average performance enters into the bear market, it may drop only by 60% instead of 85% as it was in previous bear markets. But hey, here's the good news. The first chart transition supply predicts $300,000 per Bitcoin, stock to flow also predicts $300,000 per Bitcoin, and an average model predicts $300,000 per Bitcoin. Maybe it's meant to be. Now, let's take a look at this most recent interview with Michael Saylor paints a beautiful picture how Bitcoin will capture $100 trillion of monetary energy. Let's take a look. I think that a lot of the times the Bitcoin story is, is told through um, an economic lens or a spiritual lens or a mathematical lens or sometimes a financial lens. And, you know, in the extreme, it gets called an uncorrelated speculative asset, which I hate. Right. Uh, I think the story that needs to be told much more is that Bitcoin is a masterpiece of monetary engineering. And there was no class in monetary engineering at MIT, but we studied servo mechanisms and cybernetics. And the principles of control system uh, are, are critical for aerospace engineering. The plane won't fly if you don't have stability. Avionics are all about control. Um, in electronics, you know, there's plenty of examples of control systems. And uh, in every other engineering discipline, people understand uh, the principles of controls. And thermodynamics, uh, you know, the study of energy as it manifests itself in heat and work, right, is critical to making any machine work. And, um, you know, when I think about Bitcoin, I think, well, first of all, it's the first successfully engineered monetary network in the history of the world. One day they'll probably have a, a class or they'll have a degree in monetary engineering at universities uh, next to chemical engineering or, or electrical engineering. It makes sense. Um, what is money? Uh, well, I, I think most people don't ask the question. I think money is monetary energy. I think it's the apex energy. And as soon as you understand money to be energy, then it stands to reason that a monetary system that applies the, the principle of conservation of energy <laughs> is a pretty good idea. If I create a bathtub with, a, you know, with the sink open, it doesn't work. If I have a swimming pool with a leak in it, it doesn't work. If I have a ship with a leak, it doesn't work. A plane with a leak doesn't work. Electrical engineering systems you know, and power grids with short circuits don't work. In fact, nothing in the engineering world. Aqueducts don't work, right? Bridges with a leak in them don't work. So every engineer knows you have to apply the laws of thermodynamics. You need to apply conservation of energy. If you're a mathematician, you'd call it arithmetic, right? The, the rule that <laughs> right. says that if I add nine plus nine, it better add up to 18 because on the day that it adds up to 19, some horrific thing is going to happen, right? Uh, so once you understand money as monetary energy and you understand Bitcoin as a monetary energy network, then uh, you start to appreciate the fact that it either does or does not respect the laws of thermodynamics. If it doesn't, then that means that uh, it has a leak. Uh, you know, the, the term, the colloquial term for a leak in, uh, in monetary economics is inflation. Inflation is the leak. And, you know, inflation is, is uh, a hole, you know, in the container and in the reactor. 
and and uh, your water, your electrical power, your uh, reservoirs, your hydraulic systems, your pneumatic systems, your fuselages, and your hulls, they all fail. Everybody dies if you don't have conservation of energy. And so um, I, you know, I respect Bitcoin because A, it's a monetary system. B, it's engineered uh, in a conservative fashion. And the classic definition of conservative would be uh, derived from conservation of energy. If I give you 10 items, will you give me back the 10 items or will you change the number to 11 or downgrade it to nine? And if you're not conservative in your appreciation of energy, then no machine works, nothing works. There's gonna be five, let's say today, there's $500 trillion worth of monetary energy, money in the system. And it's divided between currencies like the Euro and the dollar. It's divided uh, in tangible hard assets, maybe real estate, trophy assets, art, gold, silver, Bitcoin. And then there's a portion of it that's sitting in bonds and stocks. And um, uh, Bitcoin is going to grow from that $600 billion asset to become a $10 trillion asset like gold. Then it will subsume gold and it'll become a 20, 30, 40, 50, $100 trillion asset. And that'll be the core of the monetary planet, if you will. Right. Now, we're still going to have Picasso and people will have value for their Picasso paintings. You're still going to have your diamonds you're wearing and your gold rings, and you're going to have your beach house because you're going to want your beach house. If you're going to own stocks, you're going to own them because you love the companies because you wanted to make an investment in the company because you love the company. You think it's going to go up faster than the rate of monetary expansion. This is it better than gold, better than a stock, better than real estate, better than a Picasso, even if you love a Picasso. Right. Right. So I think that I think Bitcoin is property in cyberspace. And I think that currencies aren't going away as long as governments are with us. And I'm going to hope the government will stick around because I think there's some <laughs> good things about having a government. And a when the, the dust settles, you're going to have maybe a hundred trillion dollars worth of pure monetary energy in Bitcoin. You're going to have a hundred trillion dollars worth of stocks or 200 trillion and there'll be pri price discovery. The value of the stock should decrease until the returns or expected risk adjusted returns on the stocks are rational. You would expect the value of bonds would decrease such that the coupon on the bond is rational price that is called price discovery returning to those markets. You would expect that the value of gold will decrease and or will start to equalize to its ornamental value. When Michael Saylor opened his mouth, you should listen. I really like the analogy that Bitcoin is closed loop thermodynamic energy system. This is the only system that does not have a leak in it. Fiat currency bleeds 10% a year on average since 2008. Gold bleeds by 3% a year since 2008. Silver bleeds by 6% a year since 2008. Bond market bleeds by 8% per year since 2008. Housing market and stock market also have a leak in them. Bitcoin is the only thermodynamically sound energy that does not bleed monetary value. Michael Saylor said that there are around $500 trillion of monetary energy in this system. It's divided into euros, dollars, real estate, stocks, bonds, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is by far the fastest horse in the race. First it will eat gold and silver. Then it will eat a good chunk of every other market out there including stocks, bonds, real estate until it reaches $100 trillion of monetary assets. $100 trillion is still only 20% of market shares of the entire currency denominated assets globally. $100 trillion of market cap that would put a single coin at $5 million. And I believe it may happen faster than everyone thinks because Bitcoin, technology, and their network effect grow exponentially. If you could fold a piece of paper in half 50 times, how thick would it be? The answer is 100 million kilometers, which is about two-thirds of the distance between Sun and Earth. Let me know what do you guys think about $300,000 BTC in this cycle and $5 million Bitcoin over a long time. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button, and subscribe for more videos.